welcome to episode three of The Well. I am Teresa Palmer and today we are talking about a subject that is one of my favorite subjects in all the land, um, visualization, manifesting, praying, calling in the things that you desire. So I have been someone who has practiced these techniques uh, since I was about 16 years of age. I used to do it in written form. So I journaled every single day I would journal and I would say, I am a famous actress. I am living in Hollywood. I am making this much money. I'm working with Adam Sandler and this person and you know, all the people I, I was very interested in meeting back when I was 16. Um, and I like to believe uh, that all my efforts into this journaling and to really sitting in the feeling of um, my dreams helped to bring me to the place that I am at today. So I have done that uh, at various stages throughout my life, but, but usually once a year I spend a dedicated amount of time writing out my intentions, setting my goals. A lot of people do this around New Year's Eve. Um, I would always do it at the top of the year as well. But whenever I feel just a hit of intuition that now's my time to call something in, I will take the time out to uh, sit in a meditative space and really think about the things that I want to bring into my life. I'm a big believer in this and I know that sometimes people rub up against the word uh, manifesting, but I also think that it's the same thing that my mum does. My mum's a Catholic woman. She's a very religious woman. She believes in the power of prayer. I identify with that, um, but instead of using the terminology prayer, I use uh, visualization and manifesting. And oftentimes I use the, the dialogue uh, calling something in. So I have been listening recently to a wonderful philosopher who's been around for a very long time. Um, he was kind of the godfather of this movement. It certainly has been, the law of attraction has been around for a lot longer than um, many of us probably believe. I actually think I heard it for the first time when the book The Secret came out and it sort of took the, the world by a storm. And um, it was like, here's a secret to life. Here's something we're gonna let you in in this little thing and, and tell you that your dreams, no matter how big they are, are achievable. So I definitely read the book when I was in my early 20s and I loved the notion of the law of attraction. While I found the book fluffy at times, um, the actual concept was really interesting to me. So recently I have been delving into the works of Neil Goddard, who's a brilliant philosopher and a spiritual teacher. And I find his, uh, his words really inclusive and I feel like it's attainable, the things that he, he talks about. He can do it in a way that oftentimes, um, I, I just needed to be broken down in, in a simple format. Like what are the steps? What are ways in which we can call things into our lives? How, how can we be guided to uh, practice that helps to um, massage those ideas? So something that Neil talks about a lot is living as though you're in the end. Uh, what's your end feeling when you've attained that goal? So let's just say, I'm, I'm gonna pick one of my goals. So uh, one of my dreams, and I visualize myself and my family living, we have a farm already in Australia, and I visualize a farm here in Los Angeles. I'm very interested in regenerative farming, um, growing my own vegetables, making my own food. I uh, love the idea of being out um, away from the city with lots of space, with horses, with animals um, and kind of bouncing between Australia and, and America and really living uh, that kind of lifestyle. So I think about, he talks about living as though you're in the end. 
So let's say I'm in that place. What does it feel like? What's the feeling like to be sitting in that reality, to be sitting in that dream? Um, it feels amazing. Seeing my kids happy and frolicking and everyone's getting along really well and we are freed from any financial stress and burdens. Um, that feeling is something that Neil talks about trying to get yourself into a meditative state, whether that's through meditation or um, the moment as you're falling asleep, you can put your hand over your heart and you can really think about those moments. You sit with your hand over your heart um, and you really think about the feeling state. What does that feel like to be in that place? For some of you, it might be having a million dollars. For some of you, it might be calling in a romantic partner. Um, how does it feel to be safe and to be happy and to be living that dream life and really um, sit in that feeling and believe it to be true? I think that's one of the most important things and, and ways in which I think in the past I, I can go back and have a look that I was subconsciously blocking myself from calling those things into my life because I there was, um, was self-doubt. There was a moment or moments where I would be thinking about my dream and thinking about my career and the people I could work with or the people I could meet and I'd be like, oh, well, that's, that's not reality. I don't think I could get there and like, oh, I, I hope so, but I mean, it's a bit of a long shot. All of that negative thinking, it negates the practice of knowing what your dream is and understanding that it is in your right to have that dream. You can have that dream. No dream is too big. Um, the self-doubt really gets in your way. And Neil talks about that a lot. Other, but so many different blogs that I've read and books I've read and so many different people who um, really enjoy this aspect of life talk about how the most important step is liberating yourself from the need to have this goal achieved um, and freeing yourself from the critical voice that it won't happen to me or I don't deserve it. Actually, um, all of those things will hold you back. All of those thoughts, which are very human thoughts, Will hold you back so in some way setting an intention and working towards a goal can be challenging without having the self-doubt but i think it's an integral part of the practice to really just own what your dream is own what your desire is and not to be afraid to put it all out there now this can be done in so many different ways i'm a visual person so i do really love having a dream board and you know, in the corner, it might be career. And then up the top, it's uh, like um, what we call philanthropy or charity. I have these ideas for um, organizations that I really want to start. And I know that once I have some financial freedom, so finances is on there, I'll be able to open and launch these organizations to, and to be able to help so many people. My particular area of interest is um, helping those who can't become parents. So I want to fund fertility treatments for people who cannot, who, who the insurance company only covers one or two treatments. I want to be an organization that can uh, fund uh, someone's dream to become a parent. Um, also medical treatment for children. That's another part of the organization. So I put it all out there. I go online. I find very specific photos. Um, I print them out. I glue them in. So I have a business section. Uh, it's all about conscious business. So Love Well for me is a conscious minded business. Um, it's about mindfulness. It's about health. It's about wellness, helping people. And that's the only way I feel comfortable um, making money from a business is if I know I'm having a positive impact on someone. So it's a very fulfilling part of my life and it's a big part of my vision board. In the middle, it's always family and lifestyle. It's happy children. It's, um, you know, where we live, Australia, America, animals, plant-based living, 
just leading a healthy lifestyle, romance, um, deep, connected, amazing relationships. Uh, and so it takes a long time, I find, to really be drawn to the specific photo that you find on the internet. You can just go through Google Images or whatever. And you'll know when you see that photo and it sparks joy in the words of Marie Kondo, that's your photo for your vision board and you print it out and you, I like to make it a bit of a ritual. I put nice music on. Sometimes I'm with other friends and we're all doing it together and there's that collective energy of calling in our dreams. Um, and then career, I always do sort of in the bottom right hand corner, directors I want to work with, um, film roles that I love. Maybe there was a, like, um, for instance, I loved the role that Natalie Portman played in Closer. So there might be an image of her from Closer. Um, you know, different uh, actors and actresses I aspire to work with or have careers like. So I'll put that on the vision board as well. Everything you can possibly imagine and that that's a dream uh, put on there. I, I'm really into podcasting and I would love to start a podcast. I want to have a wellness app through your Zen life. There are so many things that I want to achieve in my life and I put it all down there. And even if you don't believe that by putting it out there, by putting the imagination and really believing in um, that feeling and that imagination, really believing in it, even if you don't, even if you decide that, that that's phony baloney and it's not something that you can really um, wrap your head around, just setting a goal, <laughs> having it down in front of you helps sometimes to just refocus and reorientate uh, your life path if you're heading down this direction but then you're reminded oh my gosh actually I really wanted to learn how to cook or I wanted to know three languages or I wanted to call in a particular life partner or start my own business stop working for other people and start working for myself it is just a reminder because every day as we all know it's self-imposed busyness. We're always adding things onto our schedule and then you get to the end of the day then you fall asleep and then you just start the day over. So we're kind of existing and living on autopilot. We're just in this mode of just kind of doing life without actually stopping and taking stock of what are the things in my life? What is it that I desire? Am I on the right track? If I'm not, visualize it, dream it, feel it. It doesn't have to be um, a vision board. You can write it out. I am a huge writer. I write them out. I call them made manifest. I write it all out as if it's happened. Living as if it's the end, as Neil Goddard says. Um, feeling what it feels like to be in that place, to have all those things that you desire to have. Mark and I talk about all the time, once we reach financial freedom, once we're in a place where we're both making really great money and we don't have to worry about all the things that you have to worry about when you're working and hustling and you've got big, a big family like us and big expenses, we always talk about how amazing the feeling will be when we are able to use our blessings to be a blessing to create these organizations, to help other people, to pay off people's mortgages, to, to be in the position to be able to affect change the way that we really want to. And when I sit in how that feels, it feels incredible. And that is what Neil Goddard talks about, is just be in that feeling state, believe everything that you're calling in. And thank you, Izzy just made us dinner. And, um, and be, it's okay to be vulnerable, but please eradicate the self doubt, liberate yourself from, uh, thinking that none of it will happen or that you're asking for these things from a place of, of lack of not having, uh, you have to be contented and, and grateful with where you're at and how your life's going. And then from that place of abundance, you can call those beautiful things into your life. And no dream is too big. All right, guys, that's it from me. Mwah!